boss. Any chance of an early dart tonight? Not much you can do about it, is there? Nah, not much. Well, at least they asked you, though, didn't they? I'm doing a foreigner. It's for the meat. Yes, I trust you'll be informing the inspector of taxes at your earliest possible moment. <laughs> oh, ah, yeah. Next time I see him. That can be arranged. So can your funeral. <laughs> It's a reason. Happens every year. Yeah, but Bobby reckons it's different this year. Do you know this is the first year they've refused to negotiate? Well, that's that new managing director fella, isn't it? That's the one. Yeah. Don reckons he fancies himself as a new Michael Edwards. <laughs> so does Bobby. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, look out. Here comes seven bellies. All right, Mark. Got any ovies? No. Well, you can take this home for me. And I want to see everything that's in there still there when I get home tonight. Mo, sometimes I think you don't trust me. Then you're not as soft as you look, are you? <laughs> I'm your pride and joy, Ma. See you later. <laughs> Some pride and joy. Well, he's old enough to have his own door key now. He's too old. Give him his own key and God only knows what he'd get up to. Isn't your cabin at home now? Not always. She often goes round to her mates after school. At least this way, I know when he's on his own in the house. Yeah. And even Damon can only do so much in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Don't be soft. Look, Meg, it was. Straight through it went. Yeah. Should have dropped down on one knee to block it. Yeah, I heard it is, because it. She'll do you if she finds out. Yeah, but she won't find out, will she? Seen anything of that fella since? It's in Turkey, yeah. Nah. I reckon we should do him, though, don't you? Let him know who he's like. Said it's gone up. Pissing, Robbie. I'm skins. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're Somebody named Huntington live over there? Uh, yes. Could I leave the package for them with you? <laughs> Don't see why not. Great. Army legs can't jet. Match your head there, won't it? Bad time. Come on. Thanks, Mrs. Thank you. Hate to live around here. Nobody's ever in. Thanks again. Lucy's had some trouble again today. She'll get used to it. Well, what happened? I don't know. It's just a feeling. Did you ask her? Of course I did. She doesn't want us making a fuss. <laughs> she's a fine one to talk. She doesn't want to go there, so she's determined to make an issue. Oh, no, I, I don't think it's that. There are some pretty rough-looking characters knocking about that place. Some pretty rough-looking characters knocking about this place. Let's wait until we have some hard evidence, eh? Like a black eye or a broken arm, perhaps? The kettle's boiling, love. Oh, right, thank you. I'll be right there. Pity they weren't so attentive to the fact that they should have been here days ago. Then I suppose we should be grateful that they've turned up at all. Marvellous what a picture of Florence Nightingale can do. What? Nothing. doing at number 10? I'm not sure I want to know, actually. I know people go on about the electricity board, but I think it's a bit excessive, even for them. Whatever it is, they won't be there for long. I'll go and make the tea. Friggin' hell, must be a mad chef or something gonna live here. You gonna work, any? Nah. Wouldn't be left here if he was. AJ, we're being piped by turkey. Beat it, will you? You'll be on the moan to me, ma'am. 
All right, you don't have to do that. Yeah, Dame, don't do that. You might give him brain damage or something. Shut up! Look at that nosy bastard. Are we going to wind him up or not? Oh. I don't know. We just should, right, Dame? Yeah. I don't know what we can do with him. Yeah. I'll tell you in a minute. Hang on. Up it way. Shut up, you mingy. Come on. Sound. Sag whenever we want. Just looking forward to a nice long bath. What would you like me to do with this? Oh, uh, better give it to the chap across the way, I suppose. You look, he was about. Still, any more problems, give us a bell. Same terms, contact me direct. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night. Evening. Hello. Think I'll put a plant on it. Good idea. Yeah, that's what I reckon. I reckon we crack a barrel down. Yeah, she'd like it. All right, when are we going to do it? After. <laughs> no chicken and out, though. Thank you. All right, ma. You have to have that on so loud. We can't eat it otherwise. Come on. Anyway, we're off out. Haven't you forgotten something? I'll do them after. And pigs might fly. Get them done now. Haven't you got any homes to go to? Your mothers will be wondering where you are. Oh, God knows why. See you after, Dave. See you. Yeah, see you after. If she lets you out. Hey, I've looked down. Better place, isn't this? How much did you pay for it? Too much. Which means I haven't enough to pay the ridiculous amount you'll try and screw me for. All right, Vic, would I do that to you? If I was on fire, you wouldn't piss on me. It's gonna be four figures at least this, you know. You kept a straight face when you said that. I reckon about one eight materials. 1800. You better get onto the royal and tell them there's a heart attack on the way in. Get on moaning, old sod, you, aren't you? Why'd you always carry on trying to make me feel bad about it? It's not my fault the government can't keep up with inflation, is it? And I'm practically giving you the materials. Well, then I'd hate to buy anything from you, then. I wouldn't mind if you were going to buy them. Where would I get them from? 1500 that's all I can afford. Well, you can't afford to have it done, then, can you? All right, so I'll tell you what. Seeing as it's you and you put a bit of work my way in the past... <laughs> I remember that, dear. How about five down? Mm. Five when we start, and he's on completion. How's that sound? Yeah, but that's still 18. Yeah, but no interest charges for extended credit. Even John Lewis can't better that. Does your father know you exist? Hey, how much did you get the quote for? Oh, would I get a quote knowing what good value you offer? Vic, how much was it for? Two and a half. <laughs> What's going on here? Somebody likes cooking. Roger, it's uh, this side you want to worry about, dear. Ah, must be the shelving units. I know. Oh, don't sound so enthusiastic. Well, I've got to assemble it, haven't I? I wanted to do my locks tonight. Ah, so we're in for a do it yourself night, are we? <coughs> Why? I haven't unpacked the first aid kit yet. Couldn't you do those accounts later? I suppose so, but I'd rather do them now. What are we going to eat? Oh, will you stop going on about your stomach? 
Well, someone has to. No one else seems to care. We'll cook something. It's your turn. Then you have to wait. Oh, it, it, it's ridiculous. How are you supposed to put these things together with only six screws and this little diagram? Perhaps you should market it as an answer to Rubik Cube, you know, Huntington shelving unit. Look, it says here, easy home assembly. You know what that is, don't you? No, what? Misrepresentation. <laughs> I've a good mind to fire off a letter to them. Aren't you overlooking something? Doesn't easy home assembly rather depend on the intelligence quotient of the assembler? Mm. Why did we buy this thing anyway? Because like the Jackson brothers, we have utilised our liquid resources to fuel capital investment, causing a heavy drag on our cash flow. You mean we're broke? In a manner of speaking. Yeah, well that sounds like double dutch to me. <laughs> we could have had that bookcase thing off my folks without any drag on our cash flow. If your mother wants to get rid of her junk, tell her to phone the council or send it to a jumble sale. Ah. Oh, no. Are we going to eat? Not hungry, are you? No. Why should I? Because you never do them. Yes, I do. I did them before, didn't I, Mum? Well, you moved the grease around a bit, I'll give you that. Well, Dad. How are you, Dad? Oh, yeah. Sorry, mate, love. Went to a lot longer than I thought. Well, these days, we're all going to sit down for a meal together. <coughs> hey, Dad. Are you going on strike next week? No, not next week, I'm not. Gives me half, I reckon, Gerard. Well, but do you know what? He's been on the deal three years, hasn't he? Ah, yeah. But he got the whispers from the doll, didn't he? He said they'd expect him to load in next week. What else is new? Anyway, I'm going out. See you later. Mother! Hey, man, dishes! Oh, Mum, it's Caxton! Hey, you stupid! Hey, stupors. hey, Karen, that's enough of that, thank you. Whose turn is it to do the dishes? Cags. It is. Look, the both of you, leave them. OK. Come on, can I just have me tea in a bit of peace and quiet? Right, see you I'll later. I'll sort that out after. Anyone want tea? How does it go, Dad? I'm just waiting for big ears to go. If he is, it'll be all over the playground tomorrow. We'll save a notice to strike tomorrow. You know why I can't do this, don't you? No, why? My brain seized up. <laughs> I'm glad you finally admitted it. Through lack of food. <laughs> the main problem is that we just don't get no say in another of the bloody factory, do we? And yet you expect me to recommend a 3% cut in wages because they're in difficulties. But who got it into difficulties in the first bloody place? Not the lads slaving the guts off on them old-fashioned machines. They can only go by what they're told from upstairs. And all they want to talk about is productivity, productivity. And what they really mean is they want us to compete with the Japanese. So that means longer hours and lower wages. We can't compete with that, Sheila. They get security of employment. Security of employment? Yeah, at what cost? They're still operating the bloody feudal system, aren't they? Well, instead of the Lord of the Manor, what they've got is Mitsubishi, Toshiba, Toyota, Honda, how's your bloody father? The workers over there actually sacrifice their lives for a job. Who wants that? I don't. Plenty round here, bud. Sheila, the only thing that's wrong with our industry is we've got too many models and they're too bloody old-fashioned. What we need is someone with a little bit of drive, a little bit of ambition, a little bit of foresight, and maybe a little bit of bottle. To look to the future, plan new models. Because that's all the customer wants, really, is some new models. So why should we be expected to take a cut in our wages? Why should we pay for bad bloody management? Because if you don't have the firm will go under and you'll be on the dough. 
She's not much, though. The mum. <laughs> About the same age as our cags, I reckon. Oh, I wouldn't mind your current team. You would if you had to live with her. I wouldn't, you know. Oh, I definitely would. <laughs> Hey, close your go. You might strip over your tongue. <laughs> when are we going to do it? The key? Nah, turkey. After. What about the key? Tomorrow. If I feel like. I always feel like it. How does that feel? <laughs> Still hungry? No. Nope. I've gone past it now. I feel too weak from the pangs of hunger. <laughs> I do love you, Rog. You're such a misery. Thanks a lot. <laughs> shouldn't have unplugged it. And you shouldn't have thrown away the instruction leaflet. Although it should be written on the back here somewhere. Why don't you fire off a letter to them? And why are you always making fun of me? <laughs> because you deserve it. Oh, come on, we're going out for an Indian. I thought we were broke. We are. But we're going to go out and spend some money to take our minds off the fact we're broke. That's why we're broke. <laughs> oh, come on, you've got your credit card. Yes, but that has to be paid for at the end of the month. You see? That's why I love you, because you're so sensible. Oh, it's so good not to have to boil a kettle. I still don't see why you have to bribe them into coming. I'd have paid twice the price not to have to go without a bath another day. That's the trouble with this country. Too many people on the fiddle. And too many people willing to encourage them. Yes, dear. Where do you suppose they should have been while they were here? Oh, they'd have had to be here sometime. Well, that's not the point. Well, what is the point? The point is they weren't where they should have been. How can anyone run a business without control over the workforce? It makes a mockery of management. Well, I don't think much of management that left us without water for five days. Probably because the chaps who should have been here on Monday were away doing something else on the side. I don't know what you're making such a fuss about. Our water's working now, isn't it? You're making such a fuss, Annabelle. Because A, I don't believe in having to bribe people to do what they should do by right. And B, because this I'm all right jack attitude is precisely what put me out of a job. I noticed they worked through their lunch hour and didn't stop for tea. <laughs> you try getting them to do that at their real work. They'd be away bleating to the unions about exploitation and all the rest of the litany. They don't think that they don't even care what effect their perks are having on the firm that pays their wages. Whinge on about the company making vast profits until the day comes that there isn't any profit. There isn't anything to invest in the future. There isn't any future, there isn't any company. And then what's the cry? Poor management. Lack of foresight. <laughs> Truth is, they just don't bloody care. Nobody cares. No one gives a toss about the future. Well, it provides them with a career, doesn't it? Yeah, but what's that, Karen? It doesn't mean they've got to spend the whole of their life with one fame, does it? I mean, that's one of the drawbacks of pay for qualifications. Look, say the kid sets out to become, well, an accountant, say. Doesn't mean he's got to start off with one, one firm and then sign work his way up to the top, does it? No, he'll jump about, he'll go from firm to firm, chasing the money, looking for experience. And his livelihood doesn't depend on the existence of that one firm. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing for him. But it doesn't do much good for the continuity of the firm he's been passing through, does it? I mean, it's like our place does not one of the board of directors got any actual shares in the factory. They run it the same way as we knock the stuff together for a weekly wage. And if something better comes along or if they can see the writing on the wall, they're off pretty smartish. I don't understand what you're getting at. The only thing that we've all got in common in our place, Sheila, is that we all get wages there, that's all. Well, it must belong to somebody. It does, but it belongs to insurance companies and pension funds, things like that. Well, they'll want to protect their investments, won't they? Yeah, they want to protect their investments, but, but say we went into trouble, we got into difficulties, they'd soon dump us, and then they'd invest elsewhere. Probably in bloody Japan. Oh, I see what you're getting at. The people who run it 
don't actually own it, do they? That's right, and they're not dependent on it for their livelihood or for their careers. And so they don't look after it the way they should, do they? Yeah, it's like the difference between us owning this place and then renting our old council house. Oh, but you can't want to go back and reinstate the Victorian mill owners, do you? Karen, I don't, but what I'm trying to say, the people with most to lose, the people that depend on that factory for their livelihood, do you know what I mean, love? I mean, the likes of me and my palm mates. We've got no qualifications apart from the fact that we've worked there all our lives. Oh, like workers' democracy and powers of the people and all that. Listen, people work better and harder for themselves. I mean, just take a look around here. There's loads of it going on on the side. Well, what you need to make us co-op then, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, kid. We could run our place better than the bloody clowns up there at the moment trying to run it. And are we consulted? Are <laughs> we buggery? They try and screw us into the ground. They ask us to take a wage cut. And then when we refuse, and we make a fuss, we're the wreckers. We're out to destroy the fabric of society and all the rest of the garbage that goes with it. So what do we do? Do we recommend a cut in living standards to the boys? Or do we try and bring them out on strike to preserve what they've got? But then that jeopardises the factory anyway, doesn't it? And it also brings about a cut in their living standards through loss of earnings anyway. How long could we keep this place going if you did? I don't know, Sheila, do I? If we did have to sell it, where would we go then? To the back of the council list again? Oh, come on, Mother. You're jumping ahead a bit, aren't you? Am I? He's not exactly painted a rosy picture for us, is he? Anyone fancy a drink? <laughs> Classic solution. The end of the world's round the corner, so let's all go and have a drink and forget all about it. <laughs> Sheila, I've just spent half the night trying to explain that we've hardly got any say in the matter anyway. So why worry about something that might never happen? You coming? Hmm. Why does it always have to happen just when you're getting yourself on your feet? <sighs> what about me? Where's your mate? Come on, kid, I'm gonna buy you a big lemonade. <laughs> Rockets. I just love to see his face. Look out. Who have done that? Three guesses. Sheila, don't ask. Let's go and enjoy a quiet drink. It's done now. In the car, please. Mind you. Couldn't have happened to a nicer fella. <laughs>